On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, Jenny shows you how she gave a formal dining room a completely new feel by installing vertical shiplap. Also, can we find new life for an old punching bag? How to give a new spin to 60s diner chairs. And can we revive an old kitchen? All that and more on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Hello, welcome to Junkin' with Jenny. Here we are, Tony Bruski. Jenny Bruski. Hi. That's us. Welcome to uh, the uh, episode, and uh, we are doing this, of course, live on Facebook. So if you're tuning in right now, hello and welcome. Uh, if you're tuning into the podcast, this is actually going to be the first episode of the new year. Okay. So if you're listening to the the audio version of this, it's January. Okay. If you're watching this live on Facebook, it's not even Christmas yet. So not quite. Happy New Year. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and any other holiday you'd like to insert in there, yes. we are celebrating it tonight. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> uh, lots of fun stuff on tonight's episode. As you just saw, we're going to be talking about a big shiplap project that we did this week. Giant. Shiplap galore. Holy shiplap. In, in a completely different direction than you're used to seeing shiplap going. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. Uh, leave your comments. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live, leave your thoughts, feedback as we go through the episode tonight, and we will read them as we uh, we go through the episode. Tonight's uh, Creative Juice, by the way, this is a good one. I, I'm really, I've been excited about this all week, about you getting have. this in. You have. Um, this is uh, Wines of Substance. This is a Charles Smith wine, and uh, this line came out uh, this year, and this is their Cabernet Sauvignon. And if you're not familiar with uh, Charles Smith and uh, his wines, um, he's he's kind of like, uh, Google him, number one, okay? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and YouTube him too, because there's some neat videos out there. He's kind of like the rock star of the wine world, okay? okay? And, and the, the guy literally has a background in in like rock life. Okay. Like for many years, he was uh, uh, over in Europe and touring uh, part of a lot of rock bands and things of that nature, leading that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Came back to the uh, the U.S. Uh, at a certain point, uh, wandered around Walla Walla, kind of fell in love with it in Washington State, which is a beautiful place. Um, and uh, then just kind of started getting into the wine business and started out with uh, a brand you may have seen, uh, K. Syrah. Um, and uh, uh, Kay Vintners, there's a, several wines under that label now. Um, and he's also the man behind, uh, we've even had this before, remember the uh, house wines? Yeah. That's been kind of a popular, oh, yeah. uh, you know, economical wine brand. Mm -hmm. uh, behind that, um, and just his, his labels are very unique and his wines are very unique. Yes. Sustainably grown, a lot of single vineyard wines, um, just really interesting stuff, and he is kind of like the the wine man of uh, Washington State, and really uh, one of the big ones in the country over the last 10, 15, 20 years uh, that just knows his stuff and knows how to make some really, really awesome wines. Uh, he has his place in Walla Walla. He's now opened up a place in Seattle called Jet City, Okay. which is, uh, it's interestingly described. It's like... It's 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 their vineyard. It's an urban vineyard, and it's it's not a concert venue, but they'll have concerts there. It's not a restaurant, but they'll have food, mm -hmm. and they have all the wine in there. It's just it's so cool. That sounds it, so it, cool. It's one of those things where if you're ever in Seattle, definitely a place to check out. But you can get their wines all over the country. They have so many brands. Um, the the substance line is is what we're checking out tonight, and it's really cool. Um, it, it, it's, it's a play on the elements. Mm -hmm. And they have all different elemental wines, if you will. And it's just good stuff. So uh, Cabernet Sauvignon 2015 is what we're uh, trying here tonight. This man also, by the way, I'm excited because he, he's just, he knows his, he knows his shit. Okay. <laughs> um, he does. And that's what I like. It, uh -huh. Just just how, because the wines are always so good. Um, only guy ever uh, named the, uh, the winemaker of the year in food and wine and wine enthusiast simultaneously 2014 oh. uh so i mean it's just it's good stuff it so is. anyway yes. cabernet sauvignon check it out the link is up on our website at junkin with jenny 
uh, com to check it out. Um, Substance is the line, and the Cabernet Sauvignon is what we're having tonight. So it is good stuff. You'll see the bottle being poured multiple times throughout the show. Yes. I'm just going to sure. sit over here so I don't knock it over in he's, the middle of the he's show. I'm going to keep it over there so I don't reach. For I'm it. just going to like, I'm going to go off camera every now and then, and you're just going to kind of see a bottle kind of <laughs> tilted over here, and then we come back with like, Okay, yes, let's talk about this or that. So We did get new wine glasses, and it is as big as it looks. Yeah, it's like insane. It's very deceiving. Like, you pour like this much. Like I think you pour the whole bottle in this glass, technically. This, this glass is just ridiculously large. It's, it's like it should have a baby fish of my head. living in it yeah. and a koi pond. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. So, by the way, <laughs> Di Diana says you have a lovely necklace tonight. Thank you. So, so does Holly. Thank you. What about my necklace? I mean, I mean, you shaved before the show. I did. I You're all smooth. What about again. my chest hair? Is my chest hair beautiful? Stop. Is that... <laughs> Just stop. Don't do that. Stop. Don't do that, honey. I did shave before the show. I decided, um, you know what? Let's be shiny. So the kids will have little furry animals to see on the sidewalk tomorrow. Exactly. I because I do. I, I shave and I it's on a towel and then I go shake it out. Yeah. And then the kids go out for school in the morning and they go, "What is this furry thing that's?" <laughs> That's um they they literally thought it was like a mouse or something that had they, died. They thought it was like baby chipmunks and yeah. they freaked out and then they realized it was just <laughs> dad's hair. So I know we've told that story on the ghost show, Scarring but Scarring the children one shave at a time. Okay. That's my, that's my song for the evening. So anyway. Uh Let's jump into our program and uh, some of the stuff that we've been working on. As you saw in the intro, Shiplap. We all know Jenny loves Shiplap. We I do. Know, we all know you love Shiplap. And that's why we've actually, you know, you thought we were, tonight we are going to talk about Shiplap. This is actually an intervention on Shiplap. Guys, you want to come out? We're going to sit down. <laughs> that's not, not a Shiplap intervention. No. Um, but uh, what we've been working on, uh, you saw the beams the other week mm -hmm. as part of the, uh, the project we've been working on in the formal dining area. That was on last week's episode. Um, now uh, we're, we're literally gone through and shiplapped the entire perimeter of the room. We we've used shiplap mm -hmm. as a wainscoting. Yes. So it's gone around the entire perimeter of the room. And if you don't know what a wainscoting is, it's kind of a decorative trim detail, and it can go up as as high or as low as you want. We chose to take it a full eight foot high just so I didn't have to cut every board mm -hmm. but I mean traditionally you can you know do that at about three feet it, it just is a matter of preference how high you want to do that mm -hmm. and we did I mean really this is a, a cool project because we have a, a taller ceiling in there so we're able to get away with the taller it's a uh, tray ceiling so it's got multiple levels that go up but mm -hmm. the bulk of the room around, around the perimeter is 10 foot high mm -hmm. so we had plenty of room to kind of figure out what we want to do and and we wanted to make it substantial since it is our dining room so with that being said that's that's really what we did there um so the wayne's coating is up and then on top of let's talk about before we get into mm -hmm. what's on top and the colors and all that let's talk a little bit about how to get something like this up because this was kind of an interesting uh we got going on it and oh we didn't think of that yeah and it was studs well, when you run shiplap, traditionally you run it horizontally. So it's going long ways across your wall. Mm -hmm. And you have kind of this little overlap portion. That's that's where the lap comes from on shiplap. And that's where you traditionally, you know, nail or screw it into your wall. Mm -hmm. And when you find your studs, it's very easy to just nail it or screw it into your stud. Because eventually, you know, as you add boards, it gets heavy. So you want to make sure you've got that properly supported. Mm -hmm. We're running it vertically. So we don't have to worry about the weight so much, but we have to make it stand up. And these boards are six inches wide and your studs should be if they are accurate 16 mm -hmm. inch on center that means from the center of one stud to the center of the next stud that's relying on a really really good contractor to do it correctly yes yeah. so what we did was we started to put them up and we realized you know they just weren't feeling secure enough mm -hmm. screwing them into the sheetrock sure even though they're not really heavy boards they're pine they're uh pre-primed and they're just they're not heavy boards but i wasn't comfortable that they were going to 
stay up and you could have a potential domino effect should one come loose they could kind of topple one after another because you again have that that lap that overlaps great during a dinner party so we had to figure out a way to get these to have some sort of security to screw into the wall so you actually came up with the idea of taking mm -hmm. thin you know ripped down two by fours yeah. so we ripped them down to about an inch wide mm -hmm. Find where the studs are, screw those into the studs, and then screw the shiplap into those boards. So yeah. it ended up being bumped out about an inch from the wall all the mm -hmm. way around the room, but it, um, it it's now secured. And what you see here, there's actually more supports up than what you see in this picture that's on the screen right now. That's just one of the support beams. We ended up actually putting up about, what, three in total all three. the way across? All the way, one at the top, yeah. one at the middle, and one mm -hmm. at the bottom, just to keep it kind of evenly spaced yeah. out from the wall. So the first thing is get the support beams up across the perimeter of your room. And they're not really even a beam. They're almost like a lattice yeah. that kind of goes across. You know, these are one inch wide by maybe two inches tall. And you could even go thinner if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. We just used what we had. Right. Um, and just got those into the studs. And then that's what you screw directly into yes. as you're going uh, and, and running the perimeter of the room. So that is how you get it up without uh, having to get a stud on every single single one you're essentially creating your own yes. your own stud as exactly. you go exactly so what you end up with is uh is this this beautiful wainscoting um that runs the whole perimeter uh of the room and then on the top of this thing you finish it off uh with uh, essentially kind of a, a ledge how would you describe what you did here this is uh, it in progress on screen right now which by the way you can watch this junkinwithjenny.com if you're listening to the audio podcast of this to see what we're talking about it's a very simple very beginner elementary craftsman picture ledge mm -hmm. so it's a six by one inch board that goes across the top of all the pieces of shiplap and then a one by three that lays um vertically or mm -hmm. lays horizontally so you're you're putting the one by six up on the face of the boards and then you're capping the top with the one by three so it just kind of rests on there and we screwed it into the wall but it finishes off all the boards because inevitably when you're putting up shiplap or whatever kind of boards they're not all going to be the standard eight foot that they say they are they're going to mm -hmm. be you know eight foot two or yeah. seven ten they're not going to be quite right and so i went with six inches to make sure i covered any variance in the height of the boards and it's very simple, but it just gives a very clean, finished off look mm -hmm. to the wainscoting, which is, we like I said, we left it a full eight foot tall. So by the time this is done, it's closer to, you know, eight foot three, eight foot four inches um, high from the top of the baseboards. And a very, very doable project, really. I mean, this is, if you, if you can measure, you can do this. this oh, is, yeah. There's no weird angles. There's none of that. It's just no measure your boards. Angles, no angles, nothing like that. I mean, it's, it's like Legos with wood. You can just yeah. put them together, screw them in, and where the gaps don't line mm -hmm. up exactly perfect, that's what caulking's for. What I like about this room and what's really kind of cool about it is the fact that you can have you know a, a nice kind of neutral safer color like the whites we're working mm -hmm. with here but if you're someone who goes i really like bold colors i like something that stands out something that pops but it would probably be a bit overwhelming if this was my entire room sure this is a great way to be able to get those colors into a room uh that otherwise it may be a bit a bit much and and, and that's a, a step I think a lot of people miss is yeah. is they just I like that color and they go for it I've done that and and then it's like oh my god it's too much yeah but this is a way you can really add a bold color and, and you've always gone with safer colors and we've talked about this yes. but this is a way I was able to kind of nudge you to go let's go with something really bold really well, kind of cool just what happened was when we moved into this house mm -hmm. Gray has been the go-to cover color for the last five years. Any varying shade of gray, blue, gray, mm -hmm. brown, gray, whatever. And I overdid it with the gray. I'll be the first to admit that I made a mistake on this house and I totally killed what I loved most about it. It was the light airiness feel and the way the light bounced around. The gray just sucked that in. Mm -hmm. So I thought, 
we've got to do something different. And honestly, when you look into a room and it looks like a black and white picture, you've done it wrong. And I had done that. I had done it to where hallways, dining rooms, whatever, looked like a shades of Cephia picture. Mm -hmm. So we decided to add some more light to the room. But you, I, I wanted to incorporate some, some sort of blue, and you really pushed me to go... Mm -hmm darker and bolder and i'm so glad that we did because if we hadn't it really wouldn't make the impact that it did and yeah. some of the pictures it looked like um, it looked almost black just because of the shading black, but, but it's a yeah. dark teal blue green color and you and, can really see it in this in this shot here and it's just two feet high around the room and then mm -hmm. you know we left the ceiling white and we had um the crown molding there so yeah. it, it's enough to add some color and add some interest without overwhelming the room but if I, you know, if we decide to change it to a different color, again, it's, it's two quick, foot high yeah. all the way around the room. It's real easy because I don't yeah. see us ever painting the, the ship lap anything but white. Yeah, it's quick. It's doable. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, it adds a lot of, adds a real pop to the room. I really like just the boldness of the mm -hmm. color. Um, and this is a room that we're not quite done with yet. So we will do a, a really nice before and after as uh, we we finish this thing up mm -hmm. um, but here's kind of a preliminary before I'm showing the video uh, the image on screen right now it's that that room it's before we had the beams up it's before we did any of the wainscoting and anything and a nice room I mean it's it really wasn't bad I mean it wasn't bad but there's absolutely no color in it mm -hmm. at all and it just as I walked by it every day I was like you know this isn't what I want to see every day so here's kind of the before and the after that you see on screen. It's not the exact same angle yet because mm -hmm. there's a, still a lot of elements we're still working on in the room to wrap it up. But we'll have a nice before and after soon. But you can really see, I mean, it doesn't even look like the same uh, room anymore. Right. It, it, just, it, it totally gave it a whole new feel. And we're actually going to be carrying this wainscoting into a living room area and doing a whole fireplace project on some upcoming episodes as well. Yeah, in a way. We're going to carry the effect of it without mm -hmm. doing actually shiplap throughout the whole yeah. main floor. We're going yeah. to have elements of it. Sure. Stacy asked a great question. What's the history of wainscoting and is that the right spelling? It's kind of antique looking and mm -hmm. I like it. I can't tell you the exact history of wainscoting as I far as... I can. You don't know. I can tell you the history. You didn't know wainscoting before I said, hey, let's put up wainscoting. Back in 1937, a man named Wayne decided to coat his room in boards. It was Why after are you a talking tra like Jay Peterman? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm giving the history of wainscoting. So I don't know exactly how old it is. I know it's in a lot of very older much older traditional houses. Mm -hmm. I think the purpose of it is to actually protect the walls. And most of the time it's made out of different types of wood, usually painted. Sometimes you can stain it, but most of the time in the older homes, it's actually painted white or some shade of cream. And I do think it was just to kind of protect walls in high traffic areas. Uh, you did spell it right, so feel free to Google it and fill me in. But I, I just, I knew what it was and I knew I wanted, wanted to incorporate a form of it. There's all different types of it. You can get very simple, um, just, you know, basically a board and batten style, or you can get very ornate where you've got almost, it looks like picture frames built into your wall. It, there's all different kinds, so. Alexa, what's the history of wainscoting? Sorry, I don't know that. She doesn't know that. You don't know that, no, so. Of course she doesn't. Okay. So, there you go. Um, is that red wine nice? It's great. It and I have wonderful. to say, it's one of the better smelling red wines that we've had on the show. It just, I don't know what it is, but it smells really, really, really nice. You know, all the wines that we've had sent to us uh, have been really good. The only one I would say we've ever had on the show that I, I went, oh God, wasn't even a, a, a creative juice. It was just one that we had around the house. And it was like, lying around. Let's open this up. And it was it was the week before we started doing creative juices yeah. as a thing. Um, and thank God we did because now we have good wine. But that one we had <laughs> that one week before we started doing it was like, there's elements of uh, dog? <laughs> <laughs> but not even dog but dog waste yeah but thank god we're getting good wine we're now. getting good wine now no more <laughs> dog shit wine I mean, it was just like like i like after we we stopped the show because like normally you'll see us sipping on the wine throughout the episode but that that episode like there wasn't much sipping going on they just kind of sat there and after we we stopped the show i said 
what are you smelling in this? Yeah. I mean, and, and sometimes wines do have uh, ethereal elements to them, meaning just kind of earth toned, <laughs> yeah. you know, minerality and things. That, sure. And you kind of go, oh, that's, that's, I'm picking up some dirt, but then there's like, you know, grapes and deep, you know, there, there, there's there's other elements that make mm -hmm. it a pleasant wine, but that one was just like, what the hell is that? But Subtle notes of sewage. So nice to have good wine. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so yes, this is a great wine. Um, Substance is the line. Um, it's a uh, Charles Smith wine, um, which if you're familiar with some of the other ones, the the K, the Sixto, the uh, the Vino. Uh, there's they have these tons of of lines that are all just great, um, and this is a new one for this year. Uh, the Substance. This is your Cabernet Sauvignon. So. Do you want more right now? Or are you? I'm good, good right good? now. Okay, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm, I'm gonna... actually savoring this, but I'm just gonna... okay. so hopefully tomorrow we will finish painting the wainscoting. It's all primed, and then I can start getting the room put back together this weekend, and we can have pictures mm -hmm. very soon. But I had a little one with the ear infection and one with the crud, so they were both home today. So not much happened. I encourage them to tell their friends they had rabies when they go back to school. And it was funny because I took um, I took our littlest one Harper to the uh, the doctor's office this morning, and she's in there and she's you know you know the 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 first person goes in and takes the temperature. That's you know, the, the nurse. The nurse practitioner. Is no, that, that's the nurse. That's the nurse. And then who's the next person? Okay. Usually a nurse practitioner or a doctor. Okay, so it's the nurse and the nurse practitioner. Is that the line? The way it goes? Yeah. T Tony says something goofy. Jenny drink. Okay, yeah. so yeah, she'd be like passed out if we anyway did um but um we were in there and she's sitting there on the the the, the doctor table you know where they have the uh the exam table the exam table i, I speak in five-year-old speak because that's where i am <laughs> uh vocabulary wise um but she's sitting up there and she's you know she's five so she's kind of restless she's uh, scurrying around and we're waiting for the the nurse practitioner to come in uh and and do whatever she needs to do to make sure she's okay and give her whatever she needs and she looks down and all of her hair goes down and then all of a sudden she just turns her head slowly and looks at me and she has this thing she can do with her eyes that's really creepy and she loves it because it's it's funny and she creepy. rolls them back and you just see can i lights. do it do i do it well you don't do it I at don't... all am i doing it at all no nope. <laughs> i have to watch the video it's just her, her the whites of her eyes and it's like someone is possessed and then she goes no hoppa only Zool. Just like Ghostbusters. Like, no data, only Zool. Yeah. And she goes, Daddy, can I say that to the nurse and pretend I'm possessed? Like, honey, that's probably not a good idea. The Child Protective Services may not... Uh... Yeah. I don't think it'd be the weirdest thing <laughs> that they heard in that doctor's office yeah. because I shit you not, the last time I was there, there was some guy in the room next to me talking extremely loud about yeah. being bit by a wolf. <laughs> so you don't fucking know what's going to happen when you go to the doctor's office in the Ozarks. It's, you really it, don't. It, it could be uh, anything. So it is. Uh, it, it can be a wild ride as far as what you may uh, you may get the man talking. And the thing is, I, I believe it. I've been out on the golf course out. Uh, really close to her house we've heard them we know they are mm -hmm. around but he was like it's kind of a yeah. mythical thing here some people believe it some people don't i i saw one they used to be here yeah. a lot yeah. but now not so much uh, we were me and, and livy were out we were driving the cart going up to one of the holes and livy you know she's she's a, an 11 year old girl that can be kind of dramatic but uh, so I was kind of taking it with a grain of salt, like, Dad, there's a wolf over there. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's a coyote. That, that, like, that's that's realistic, a coyote. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm looking. I'm sure she saw something. Yeah. And I'm looking. I'm like, holy shit, that is a wolf. And, I mean, it was not a coyote. It yeah. was a wolf yeah. standing on the tee box where we're supposed to tee off from. And then she's like, oh, no, no, no. Just be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> like, we have to sneak away here. And and the golf carts are like speed controlled, so you can't. So like, you go five you miles an hour out away. running the wolf. So I'm just like, and we get away. But yeah, so that's uh, adventures there. So hey, if you have a uh, item space place that you'd like to uh, <laughs> wolf transition, whatever. What I just know. did was a transition. <laughs> hey, uh, 
piece of taxidermy you'd like some advice on, uh, send it into us at junkinwithjenny.com and we may use it on a future episode of the program. You can submit your pictures there and we may talk about it and uh, give you some ideas and uh, advice. Tony looks like a newborn, <laughs> is what Myron <laughs> says uh, in the comments. Thank you. I, uh, I, I try to go for a new look every now and then. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to our, uh, our next item that, uh, someone has submitted to us to get some advice on. Uh, let's go to this thing right here. And this, what we're looking at, it, it's, it's, it's like the, the headboard essentially to what would be probably a, a twin bed or a full size bed. Nope. No, nope. not even a little bit. What is it? <laughs> it's actually a bookshelf that goes on top of a desk, like a hutch. Okay. So it would have sat on another piece of furniture. So it's okay. kind of open on the bottom, raised up. It's got two shelves and it's got some supports in the front. Then I just invented a new use for it, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> After assuming so what it might you. be. Yeah. So it's a headboard for Tony. No, it's <laughs> actually, it, it's a bookcase that goes on top of a desk. And, you know, I don't know what the exact dimensions are of it. It looks fairly like the size of a twin headboard. It mm -hmm. could be larger than that. And that's going to make a huge difference on how you use it because of how heavy it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really like the idea of actually just putting a shelf on the bottom, taking those front two decorative supports out and making it just a regular bookcase. Mm -hmm. You could even kind of cut off. They've got these little decorative, um, we'll say points if you will, where they kind of come to a point and then you've got this decorative support that's not structural at all, you could easily cut that off and just turn the whole thing into a, a simple bookcase, which could be used, you know, mm -hmm. on top of another piece of furniture or just on the ground. Mm -hmm. There, it, it is, I mean, the, the way it's laid out, there's a lot of things you can do with the wood. Um, you could chalk paint it, you could paint it, you could sand it and stain it another oh, yeah. way if you'd like. It's a really versatile piece. I would say the idea I would have would be to use it as a headboard because mm -hmm. I, sure. <laughs> since you just told me that's not what it was, I thought, but you're right, it is kind of like lower um, it, to the ground. Uh, so it's such, unless you're just laying the mattress on the ground, but you could easily affix this thing to the, the wall up mm -hmm. a little bit. And it, it could be, a, I would take probably the, the, the uh, poles out in the middle of it and just really kind of modernize this thing up. Probably black chalk paint is the direction I'd go. Maybe a bit of an accent or something on, on some of the the top pieces of it. Um, but I think it could make a, a decent headboard for a, a guest bedroom or a kid's bed, especially a kid's bedroom. You know, putting books, there's stuff on it. There's, sure. there's a lot of things that could be, I, I could see this really being a, a fun headboard as a kid you know where you're sitting in bed you got you're playing with stuff and you're uh -huh. putting stuff away it's just right there not laying in bed with you mm -hmm. so the other thing that i thought of when i saw it i kind of thought how would i personally use it in my house and mm -hmm. not just the generic what would you do with it i've been wanting an old-fashioned plate rack that hangs on the wall where you have the dowels that are vertical where you stick the plates in between mm -hmm. and i thought this might work for that where you could put cup hooks along the bottom where it's open and sure. then add some dowel rods between those two shelves yeah. and maybe make a plate rack depending on how deep it is if it's not deep enough the plates are going to roll out and that's pointless mm -hmm. but if you you know were able to attach dowel rods which you can get at any hardware store or craft store depending on how big or little you want them you know is how you affix them but I would do that. I would actually make it into a plate rack. Do you mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, I know what you're The old time kind of country farmhouse mm -hmm. kitchen style. That's, sure. That's what I've been wanting because I have more plates than I know what to do with. You're kind of a plate hoarder. There's a, a level you know of what? I have it squirrels under between them sometimes. I haven't bought plates in I don't know mm -hmm. how long, yeah. but I, I collected dishes. I was a weird teenager. I collected dishes when I was a teenager, and I have some beautiful, very old sets that I will pass on to our girls. But I, I don't feel the need mm -hmm. to gather anymore, but I need to use and display and love the ones I have. It's like hoarders. It's they, not hoarders where, at where, all. I mean, like, I'm gonna give this to my kids. It's like, your kids don't want them. There's squirrels stuck between the plates. That's No, the kids no, the kids have already said which ones they've wanted. They've staked their claim on the plates? They're just waiting for me to die so they can have the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> 
go. Kids, someday you know, you'll look back on this episode going, yeah, my mom had a Kinda. point there. Yeah, Kinda true. It. So, um, okay, there you go. Um, would be good for towels too, says yeah. Stacy. I, I could see, see that. that hanging in a bathroom. Towels stuck and, and sure. maybe some baskets for some toiletries. That would be really good. Sure. Let's go to a space. Let's grab this space right here. This is a kitchen. Okay. This is a kitchen that uh, could use uh, use a little bit of work. This is like grandma's kitchen. This yeah. has the knotty pine paneling doors and front and, you know, surround mm -hmm. on the bottom. The only thing that's missing that, you know, my grandmother literally had in her kitchen was the cabinet bank that hung over the bar where you couldn't see the people in the kitchen. You had to kind of look between the countertop and under the cabinets. Mm -hmm. But this is a fairly large space for, I'm guessing, an older home. And I really, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how old the cabinets are. It looks like they're probably from the 50s or 60s, which if they're in good shape, I would paint them. Mm -hmm. Beyond, because I, I, I don't see changing the layout of this room no. beyond what it is. It looks like the layout is actually good. I would probably add um, a range hood over the where the range is, mm -hmm. and you know consider taking the scalloped little decorative window opening down that's between you've got, you know you've got your window over the kitchen sink and you've got cabinets on both sides and they kind of have the scalloped piece of wood just knock that thing down nobody needs that that's so date your kitchen but i would paint all the cabinets and actually it looks like this cap this kitchen doesn't get a whole lot of light so i would paint them a lighter color either a cream a light gray even white if you know you're, you're into a white kitchen and replace the backsplash but i would try and work with the cabinets because that's a huge expense that you can save on and really make it, you know, you can really, really save a lot of money if you don't have to do that. Let me ask you about the backsplash there because it looks fairly textured mm -hmm. as far as what we're seeing here on the screen. It's hard to get a, a good look at it from this picture. Can you paint tile? Can you chalk paint tile? Can you you can you rust-oleum tile? Okay, technically you can paint tile. There's mm -hmm. a primer that you should put over it first. I don't know exactly which one it is, but there is a specific primer for painting over tile. Mm -hmm. And then you can get paint that's meant for that. The problem is with kitchens is that they're heavy use for mm -hmm. the most part, and you're going to end up having that chip or scratch. It's, it's not going to hold up well. Okay. I would if you're con if you're concerned about the cost of replacing that much tile for the backsplash, you know there's tile out there that's really inexpensive that's classic that can go you know for years and years and years and nobody's gonna ever know how mm -hmm. old it is. I would just pull all of it out. Okay, I was just curious because it looks like a nice kind of a thicker tile that's in there and the texture looks like it could be okay. It's just it's like can you change you know whatever ornate colors they may have on it to be a little bit more modern you certainly can, I, I, but it just yeah. doesn't it won't last you're better off just ripping it out and doing a diy it's it's good project. if you're gonna paint it take a picture and then yeah. that's the only day it's gonna look good i totally agree on uh painting the uh, the cabinetry i think mm -hmm. that that is a salvageable thing change paint it change your hardware it looks like new cabinetry the layout's not bad at all i mean it would really be easy to get Maybe not a permanent island into this kitchen, but I maybe would do something that's like kind of a rolling cart. A rolling yeah. island yeah. would be good because then you could totally move it out of the way yeah. if you don't need it. Um, but I, I agree because there's a lot of space there. It's kind of a, it, it's a very wide galley with a little bit mm -hmm. of a peninsula on the one side. So, y you know, you've got the space for an island, but it may be kind of cumbersome yeah. if you've got a lot of people over and people always congregate in the kitchen. So yeah. I would, yeah, I like your idea. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of easy things you could do to that space without having to completely reconstruct it. Mm hmm um, so to speak. Brad also says really nice layout to work with many options with that space. You're right. There's just, there's a lot to do there. So that is that space. If you have a space place item, you want some uh, advice, thoughts on, send it to us. Junkin with Jenny.com is the place to go to do just that. Let's go to this one. Cause I have no clue what the hell to do with this thing. This is a <laughs> little punching bag. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's on a, uh, a, a piece that is, um, 
uh, you know, holding it up. Essentially, this would, you know, mount onto something. Uh, and then there's your punching bag. Um, I think there's more uses probably for the mount than the punching bag itself. <laughs> um, Jenny, your thoughts? You totally stole my thunder there because I was going to say ditch the round piece that the punching bag is hanging from. Yeah. And just keep just the metal brackets that hold it to the wall. Sure. They're really neat. They're kind of, um, for those of you listening to the show, these are very, very long U-shaped brackets yeah. that are metal that are going to attach to the wall because mm -hmm. i'm not sure everybody's seen how a punching bag actually and there's different them. ways of affixing them so you have the u-shaped brackets then a circle piece of metal and in the center of the circled piece of metal is the punching bag sure so i would just ditch the punching bag and the circle mm -hmm. piece and just keep just the brackets and they're kind of neat you could hang them you know out from the wall mm -hmm. and use them as supports for wood shelves mm -hmm. or you could even hang them from the ceiling and and use them for some supports vertically mm -hmm. you, you know there's just a lot of options there um i just i don't know what would you do with them the thought i had on it but it would it would require some metal fabrication so it's kind of a step mm -hmm. beyond normality um is i think it would be a neat uh, wine glass rack holder if you could get some circular metal up there to hold the glasses. I suppose you could get some, uh, you know, bendable, you know, copper or something to do it with. It would be very difficult to get it perfectly, you know, circular though. You mean beyond just attaching these brackets really close together? Take the punching bag off, you know, do something with the color of it, paint it, do something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm just thinking of you have like a starting point on the uh, uh, on the circle that has an opening to mm -hmm. it, and then the circular motion kind of goes around the thing, and there's there's two metal brackets where essentially you just put wine glasses on it and they they hang in a circular motion, and you can get so many on there. It'd be really kind of a neat piece. It's mm -hmm. just how do you get that metal? fabricated to be like that. I suppose if you reached out to a metal fabrication place in your town, you may be surprised how sure. economical they probably do it for. Just going, I, I need basically two pieces of metal just bent in, in this direction and, and made this way. Can we do this? How about this? How about in the spirit of talking about our creative, joy, creative juices, mm -hmm. you bolt them to some heavy wood so mm -hmm. they hold, they stand upright. Mm -hmm. And you could easily fit staggered wine bottles in there, and it's a wine bottle holder. You put the two of them one in front of the other, and then you stack the wine bottles back and forth on them. I'm not understanding how you're doing this. Really? No. Okay, so you bolt them to the ground. You're bolting or, what to the ground? You're bolting the, the metal U-shaped bracket things. Instead of hanging them on the wall, Okay. you're bolting them to where that is, they're, they're, like, <laughs> they're like St. Louis arches up. Okay. One okay. in front of the other. Okay. okay. So then you can stick wine bottles in there. I don't think you could fit two side by side, but you could kind of... Come back on the camera. You could kind of fit one and then another kind of staggered back and forth okay i kind of i think i see what you're you're saying if i had thought of it earlier i would have drawn it sorry i have a notepad here okay 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 i can do this we're gonna play pictionary now everybody pictionary okay, okay. i'm gonna draw an obscene picture nope you're not <laughs> okay what is this this is gonna look obscene with wine bottles and arches Wait, that's not a wine bottle holder jenny oh, i gotta start over already dun, 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 dun. while jenny is doing that i'm gonna tell the story of shiplap once upon a time in 1934 a man named james lap decided oh damn it you're so they're standing right. up like this one Jeez. in front of the other what the hell are you drawing that's Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> she drew this kind of, uh, for those of you listening to the program, uh, cylindrical object um, that... Whatever. Whatever. I'm, I'm working on this. I'm trying to not okay. be obscene. It's very Back to uh, the story of Mr. Lap. Shut up. Anyway. Okay, so there's... 
I see. Bottles stacked in this thing. How are you supporting them in there, though? Are they just kind of just stacking on top of each other? They kind of just stack one on top so of each other. So you have to take other. the top off first, otherwise they would all kind of... You can't, like, grab from the bottom. Probably, yeah. I mean, that's two thoughts. I didn't have that second thought. Well, it's like an X wine uh, holder where you have to... Right, where you have them all stacked yeah, sure. on each other. Okay. I could see that. I could see that working. There you go. Anyone have any any, any better ideas than that? Oh, God, is what uh, I see for a A comment. man cave light fixture. That would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That would be pretty cool. Stacy says, I live for Thursday nights. <laughs> so do we. So do we. This I've is seen Pictionary, right? This is must-see TV. Is it a wine bottle or something else? I don't know what she's referring you to. You thought I was going to go there. She just stopped mid-sentence. And... Okay, so there you go. Uh, good luck <laughs> with that thing. Um I, I could see it being an interesting. Uh, I, I see the uh, the the light idea as well. I, just, I I always go down that road, but I could see kind of doing something neat with that too. So there you go. I see it, Jenny. Uh, do you need a glass of wine because of the kids or Tony? Says Chelsea. Kind of both because it was a sick day for both Munchkins today, mm-hmm. and Tony is Tony. So I lock myself in my office and I don't come out all day. No, so. he doesn't make me drink. He makes me laugh, and I, I really love that. So. And drink. What, uh, watching from Washington State. Well, then, Michael. Go get some of this go wine. Go get some of this wine. It's in your backyard. Yes. yes. Walla Walla, they have a place. And uh, also in Seattle, they have um, the other place, too. So uh, it is uh, it is cool. Uh, fun fact, I actually used to be on the air, on the radio, <laughs> in Walla Walla, Washington. I'm not kidding. I know you're not I kidding. I never lived there. Uh, but I did, uh, uh, it's called voice tracking. It's where you, you put people who are not really there and they do uh, pretend they're there. And uh, I did a, a like an afternoon show on a top 40 station there mm-hmm. for several years. Even flew out there once. They had the, uh, the station was called OK95. And they had a... Um, uh, their their listener concert, their celebration of the year, kind of their thank you for listening thing. And uh, the concert that I went for, and keep in mind, this was like 2003, four-ish. Okay. And it was kind of a retro uh, concert. And on stage, I got to intro Tone Loke and Sir Mix-a-Lot. Nice. At like the best Western at uh, in, uh, in Walla Walla. Okay. And uh, Sir Mixalot demanded a huge amount of security just to get from his suite at the Best Western uh, to the stage. Is that the I like big butts guy? And I cannot lie. Okay. Yes. Uh, that. Uh... I only know that because our five year old loves that song. <laughs> she does. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but uh, I have been out in that area. It's a beautiful place. I had no idea there was like kind of like, uh, you know, in that area of the country. Um, I didn't realize there was like desert settings as well. I, I never think of no. of Washington as having that, but I mean, it goes from lush to desert to hmm. it's 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 a beautiful part of the country, um, but uh, in a great uh, wine region uh, as well. So, anyhow, what do we got next? Now, up next, here we go. These lovely uh, seats. Okay, what were they? Um, the the way it was submitted to me, it said it was a lunch counter, but they're numbered. That's why I'm thinking like. I don't get the numbering on this. But... I, I love the numbering. These mm-hmm. look like almost, and I know it's not what they are, but they almost look like old school seats without the desk in front sure. of them. But there's numbers in the upper, when you're looking at it, the upper right hand corner. They're wooden stools that are not high. They're low mm-hmm. sitting. So it would almost be like low low sitting lunch counter, I guess you could go with. Yeah. Um, but they're really, you know, almost Art Deco-ish in style. And they have a metal base that looks like right now they're bolted to some wooden circles mm-hmm. to kind of keep these from standing up or keep them to mm-hmm. support them to stand up. I mean, but you could bolt them to the floor, which I'm sure they sure. were bolted wherever they were before. Mm-hmm. I think they're really cool. And you, you know what I would do with them? I would actually, if I had a round table... Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, the size of a four person table. Yeah. So like a four foot size table. Sure. I would actually bolt them to the floor around the table. And I think that's great because how often do you have to move chairs to sweep sure. under the table and everything? And it's just They're got just this 
simple round base that goes up and mm -hmm. I'm sure they swivel. Yeah. And I just think they're really, really neat. And I love that they have the numbers on there, whatever mm -hmm. the numbers mean. I, I think it's great. Yeah. I think this should be a really neat, uh, like man cave type item because mm -hmm. they, they all, with the numbers on them, I was getting like stadium type seating out of it. Yeah. And I know it's not, but it, it's almost like really, unless maybe the, the seats themselves at one point were a stadium type seat and then they get bolted to these, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's current state and it's kind of a, a already a mix, a mix match of different things. It's repurposing repurposed. Yeah. 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 I would take what you have here. And if you have a man cave of some sort, what I would do is because they're they're you could always put new stands on it. But what I'd actually do is I would make these as bar stools. I know they're lower, but here's what you do: you kind of elevate the bar up a little, or elevate the the area where these things mm -hmm. sit a little bit, and then you have so a step or two up. You can then sit in these stools and then your bar's on the other side, but that's lower. The floor to the bar is lower than where this is. Uh -huh. And then you put these four things in front of the bar. So they're kind of sitting up here, but the bartender can be back here and still standing at regular height and it, it would all work out. Okay. And it just it's, it's a neat little unique idea for a man cave in front of it in front of that bar mm -hmm. that's where you have your projector and your big screen so it's almost something you could just sit back in and watch the okay. game or something at like stadium seating yeah. in your house other than then you know the man cave thing now is you know the the theater seating and all that mm -hmm. i would go with this for your seating but have your bar literally in, right behind you just like in a sports bar the the screen is back there and this would be kind of the seating for it does that make sense? It does. You know, when you said bar stool, I could see unbolting it completely from the support base. You can do a totally new base. Do a new yeah. base that raises it up and makes it into yeah. a bar stool. Either, ha you know, yeah. you either have somebody make it out of metal or I'm a big fan of making things out of pipe. So sure. I would, you know, look at making bases for these seats yeah. out of pipe high enough that yeah. it fits whatever bar height you need yeah so i mean if you don't want to i mean it would be kind of an undertaking to elevate an area but it would be a neat mm -hmm. accent as well because i mean man caves are kind of that they're kind of doing extreme things to an area of the house that normally wouldn't have something so extreme in it but we're about doing yeah. that through that whole and that's house. where it can be really fun yeah. that's where i could see like leaving it on this base don't change the base, change the elevation of the room in certain areas to make this work. It's like, oh, I step up two steps here and you get this whole little, you know, and that kind of also makes it more of the the stadium setting mm -hmm. where it's it's like, oh, I'm, I'm walking into my my box or my sure. area. So it's, there's a lot of ways you could play with this and have some fun with those uh, with those seats. I would I would love to find those. Yeah. And I would, I would bring them home. I, I really do like this. Michael says, heck yeah, Zilla Washington is awesome with great wine too. So we have a Michael who's out there who knows all about the Very wines cool. of Washington State. Yeah, they got some great stuff out there. I'd almost, I mean, I do like California wines, but I, I would actually say Washington and, and even Oregon. Um, I, I, I tend to preference up in that area sometimes. I mean, I, I, I like wines from everywhere. In January, actually, in January and February on the show, we're going to be talking about um, Michigan wines. Okay. Um, and that's something that I think a lot of folks don't even realize exist sometimes or that are, are good. Um, but I learned that when I lived there mm -hmm. um, 12 years ago, perfect Riesling country. If you like white wines, it's really good. But they there's also a vintner up there. I talked to him this last week who's making really, really good reds. And I'm, I'm really kind of surprised by this because I didn't know you could do it. But with all the hybrid yeah. growing that is, is done now, he's managed to do it. Um, so we have a lot of really interesting wines coming up. We're going to talk about Michigan wines in January and February here on the show. Um, and some I'm excited about some of the, the vintners that are sending us their stuff. It's places you've been to now. Yes. Um, yes. And places um, uh, I've, I've frequented when I lived there. So I'm excited about uh, showcasing uh, some of those here uh, in the coming weeks. So adding wine to the show has been fun. And I hope fine. you guys like it too. Uh, and please do support the, uh, the the vintners that we talk about here on the show. We always put their website up on our website um, so you can go and order pretty much, you know, depending on your liquor laws uh, in your state you're in. But right. if you're able to, uh, these wines that we feature are able to be shipped to most places of the, uh, the country. Um, all right. I think we have another space to look at. We do have a bedroom, I believe, to take a little 
peek at and here we go this is just kind of uh it's a nice bedroom space the the furniture decent um i, I like those sleigh beds like that uh -huh. um and I, it's just it's just kind of vanilla right now the way it is and it's like what do you do to spice that up did they say what they were wanting to achieve with this room? They wanted some more personality to the room. They like okay. their, their 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 bedroom set, yeah. but they're just really not quite sure how to make the room more personable for them and open to ideas and colors. So there really was no specific direction on palette, if you will. They want your palette okay. ideas. So well, I really like. Can I see it bigger again? Here's the bigger picture. Okay. I really like the wood on this bed bedroom set. It's really nice. It's kind of a darker tone. Dark cherry, I'd it's, say. Yeah. So with that, they've got, it looks like, you know, fairly decent carpet in this room. It's a, a neutral color. To really make the wood pop and to really add a relaxing you know, feel to the room, I would go with kind of a blue tone on the walls. And blues are so hard to pick out because if you go a little blue and you put it up on your wall, it's like your whole room's a robin's egg. Mm -hmm. Sometimes err on the side of less when you're picking out blue because it can overwhelm a room so quickly. But I would do kind of a calming gray blue, slate mm -hmm. blue in this room. Yeah. And I actually think I would do, you know, the main walls of the room, I would do a true slate blue. And then I would maybe go up a shade or two lighter on the ceiling. This room has kind of a vaulted ceiling. Mm -hmm. And right now it's just a sea of white. But because you have so much of that ceiling that's not just straight overhead, it's angled up. It's in your line of vision, so I would actually play on that. And mm -hmm. I would do maybe a couple shades lighter on the blue, on the ceiling as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the way that this thing is, is slightly slanted, yeah. could you do some paint on there without it being overkill? I would, and it's going to make the room feel cozier, possibly make the, feeling, make the ceiling feel a little bit lower, mm -hmm. but it's not going to, you know, overwhelm and crowd yeah. the room. But it's going to give more of that cozy feel. Um... I know that the dresser came with a mirror that's perfectly fine, but I'm a big fan of finding some other type of decorative mirror to put over a dresser just to add some visual interest. A good silver uh, mirror would go good with the blue. Sure, you know, something like that or something, you know, with the uh, actual frame mirrored itself. Yeah. You know, you can play with it and kind of, you know, set the tone for the room. If you want to have more of an antique feel, you can go with something that's got some chippy paint. Or if you mm -hmm. want more of a lush feel, you know, go with something that's maybe got the mirrored frame like I mentioned. But um, too often, you know, you've got your just your standard mirror over your dresser mm -hmm. and it's like, a little too matchy matchy sure um but i would hang some either artwork or mirrors as well behind the lamps on the nightstands and that's mm -hmm. going to reflect more light into the room but mm -hmm. it also gives another layer of kind of elegance if you will yeah uh, and then over the headboard it just screams for something either a piece of wall art or piece of architecture something that's going to just really you know kind of highlight the grandness of the room. Like a picture of George Costanza laid out, you know. <laughs> yeah, spread out on the yeah. couch in his boxes. Maybe a good, uh, a good uh, over the bedroom. No, thing. I mean nothing sets the tone for romance like that. I guess if it were my room, I would do maybe a series of old windows that don't have glass in them, just mm -hmm. hung over the the bed. Something that's just going to be, you know, you know, something that's going to catch your eye, kind yeah. of visual. Uh, and then it looks like there's shears on the windows. I hate sheer curtains. I have yet to figure out the purpose of sheer curtains. Yeah. Either go with curtains or don't. Or don't, because the, the sheer curtains don't block light. They don't block, block light. They don't provide any privacy. No. So, and these are kind of maroonish ones. Get those down. Either put up, um, you know, maybe some white curtains or even pattern curtains against the blue or, you know, maybe look at doing a bamboo shade. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of the feel that you want. But just do something other than shears. I, yeah. I, I don't. Do you know why there's shears? Curtains? I have shears. no idea. I, I've, I, I didn't know what I was doing when I was buying curtains initially. Yeah. And I would buy those and be like, these aren't really doing anything for me. It's like either they block light or they don't. What's, I mean, I want light block. When I have mm -hmm. a curtain or that's why I love shutters now. Yeah. It's like 
block the damn light. That's the purpose of this. I love shutters. Too. Um, but the uh, I would go with if you can do a shutter, I would do a shutter there. Uh, but if you can go with a, a good light blocking mm -hmm. curtain of some sort that plays into the uh, the feel of the room and the color. Lots of neat um, designs and textures you can go with that would really work with that light blue. Mm -hmm. The silver tones are going to be working with. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with almost everything you said. As far as the lighting fixtures uh, next to the bed, I'd probably go with some sort of like a mirrored glass uh, lamp. Like a mercury yeah, glass. Yeah, like a mercury glass. Mm -hmm. We've done some of that. Um, I think that would fit really well with the blue. Um, and I completely agree on the mirror. The, the mirror with a headboard, get rid of it. It just kind of came with it. It's not going to, you know, there's no reason to have it just to have it. Go with something that's going to be a little more innate for your room. Um, and really kind of give it some more personality. You'll be much happier with that than what's built into the, the mm -hmm. dresser itself. I would say the bedding, um, go with some grown up bedding. <laughs> it kind of looks like I it's, can't see what it is. It's striped. Go with Grover. Go with a Grover pattern well, where Grover's like waving. It's striped. Oh, I'm sure this is a simple bed to make up in the morning. I think my parents had that pattern. And I would they just still do. You you want to add some lushness to this, you know? Yeah. I I would go with a few more pillows, yeah. bigger pillows in the back, but also you know add some kind of. Let's talk about color. bedding for a moment. Let's talk okay. about uh, because that's something we've really kind of learned about in the last sure year or two. Do you want more? Are you good? Of course, I want more. When have I ever said no more wine? I don't, I don't. I don't think I've ever recalled hearing that. I don't have um, a problem. But there's, there's so many just good uh, sheets out there that are now affordable. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you're you obviously the one that, that has been buying a lot of, not obviously, mm -hmm. but you have been the one that's been picking them sure. out a lot lately. Um, and there's been there two that I, I, I we, there's, there's that super, super fine one that we've been actually buying through and this is not a commercial this is not an advertisement whatsoever mm -hmm. we'll just talk about sheets here for a moment since we're on the topic um <laughs> holy um, sheets holy sheets okay um <laughs> what was the last one you just bought it almost had like kind of a that that perfect t-shirt quality to it what, what, what was that modal I, I it's either modal or model i depends okay. on how snotty you want to sound again not an ad no. not being paid for this is just us talking about the product m-o-d-a-l okay and it's a it, it, it's like cotton i think it's in the cotton family i'm not real sure okay. it's either super processed i don't know what it is it's extremely soft i yeah. i probably about 20 years ago got a pair of jammies made out of it and yeah. they were my favorite ever so when i saw sheets mm -hmm. made out of it i i was like oh we got to try this sure um the only downside is they don't kind of keep their shape they kind of stretch all over and so they it's, do it's hard to make the bed when they don't there's no crispness to them and they, i do like them but I, yeah here's the one thing i did notice and i brought it up the other night it kind of does ball up eventually, kind of like a yeah. sweater. So it's like there's probably a limited lifespan on that. But the other thing that we've been getting, those super fine ones that we've been getting that are just so smooth, but they're mm -hmm. cheap. And it, like in the past, you'd have to spend like, you know, a hundred, two, three hundred bucks for a set of sheets like that. But now, whatever the hell, what is the They're material? like microfiber. It's some sort of a microfiber. Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, I know you can buy. It's not the thread count. Like with it's, it's all the thread. Yeah. Count, you know, twelve hundred thread count. This puts it to shame. I I like I like my goofy t-shirt yeah. sheets. You know. And there was a point where we actually did buy really good whatever the hell, super high thread count sheets. Yeah. And they were expensive. Like, yeah. oh, these will be like sheets that will last a lifetime. No, they actually weren't. We then bought, they were like $30 sheets mm -hmm. on Amazon that just had crazy high reviews. And it was just that, that not even a thread count with it. It was that, that it's microfiber. It's just listed as microfiber. Oh my God. And it was 10 times better. It, it's just, it's one of those like things that comes out to the marketplace and it just, it, it changes the game yeah. uh, on sheets and, and things that are out there. There's so many ways to get good, comfortable sheets now without spending a ton of money. I mean, there, there really is. And the thing is, don't buy sheets based on thread count no. if you don't like how they feel anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter if yeah. they're the you know highest quality. Sure. If you're not comfortable in them, you're not going to sleep good in them. So. And I get the argument if it was 1989 and that's all you had to go on and thread count is really was the basis of everything. Right. But that's not the case anymore. No, and, and there's all kind yeah. of you know hybrid fabrics yeah. and things out there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. did we... Sheets. 
There we get go. that done. We answered that. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's something that it is. applies, it you know, is. to what we were talking about. So um, there you go. It's more than you ever thought you'd wanted to know about what we sleep on at night. We sleep on, uh, and we don't even use any of that. We actually sleep on squirrel pelts. That's uh, we've oh we've caught them here in the Ozarks, and I uh, I catch them, and and Jenny uh, kind of knits them together during the day. And <laughs> so Sarah says, "Wow, Tony, did you get a shaver for Christmas? You look ten years off." Ten years younger. Ten years younger. Do I look ten years younger when I when I shave? Is it? You kind of do. Yeah. But here's the thing: your yeah. shaver was literally on its last leg. It died. It he... died tonight, and I was like, I was, I was, I was shaving <laughs> weird yeah. uh, designs into where I still yeah. have hair on my head, and I was like, here, can I do this? Can I go on the air with this tonight, honey? And it was just weird designs. You had a big T on the side of your head, yeah. and yeah. I was putting my makeup on. You were goofing around, and then your shaver started to die. And I was like, yes, please let it die. So he has to go wear a hat on the show yeah. with this big T and he'll learn his lesson. But mm -hmm. yeah, he managed to get enough life out of it that it, it I found it. No, no, I didn't get enough. Life. I didn't get you it to survive. It died. <laughs> I, I, I like, I tried unscrewing it and getting it to change. God. I just got to get rid of it. And then I had a backup one, which was actually made for, cause the, the shaver that I used for what's left of my hair, uh, on this little like crown of hair that I have. Um, it's like a Caesar crown. Yeah, I mean, it's more so just for like <laughs> beards and stuff, but it's, it's so light I can usually get away with it. But it, it has died tonight after I made some designs in my head. That's karma <laughs> saying, guess what, Tony? Screw you. Um, and But I did have an uh, extra like a Remington plug-in one that is made for shaving your head. And I used that and I got the rest of it off and then I used a razor. Uh, so nothing like tuning in to hear how to improve the looks of your home with the big T shaved out of your head. I'm glad things worked out. I was going in for the, I was, it would be great. Just like a lightning bolt or something. And right. Like I'm a 1989 basketball player, you know, like back, <laughs> yeah. back when like people would do like the designs and everything. I know, yeah. I know. Or well, some of the, uh, the pump shoes, the, uh, I think you may be getting a shaver for Christmas. So I'm already ordering one on Amazon tonight. So Good. Uh, there you go. Good. So, uh, yeah, I have to uh, replace that pretty quick. <laughs> Although I only shave like once every two months. That's so. true. In fact, maybe I should just, I'll start here. This is, this is the beginning of the new year for the show. Uh-huh. I should just not shave until December of 2018. We could do like a totally, it'd be a very dramatic before and after. That'd be gross. It'd be like down to you here. Have animals living in your face. Chipmunks. It's like, and during the year, I, I made some friends. Well, I made you shave last time because your beard started <laughs> to smell like barf. <laughs> it did. I didn't want to uh -huh. kiss you because your beard smelled like barf. Well, that's special. How does that happen? Is it just I don't know. Just breath gets on it and just I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Know. Don't ask barf me. Barf on your beard? I mean, I don't think I barfed, but no, I don't think you barfed, but it was gross. This would be a great little excerpt right here, just this little piece. God. <laughs> no, I don't think you barfed, but uh... <laughs> junking with Jenny. <laughs> It's been fun, y'all. There you go. That wraps up today's episode <laughs> of the program uh, called uh, Barfing with Beards. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, gross. I would like to see that uh, the tea shave. The tea shave was yeah. epic. <laughs> it was so funny. I love how much fun you two have. Yep, I agree with Jenny. So That's there... the first time I've seen him nervous about his appearance. I was like thinking you were going to go on the show with this tea shave, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> My shave is really quickly. I have to be on camera in 30 minutes. Yeah, it uh, Yeah, it was great. It was uh, it was a good time. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you, guys. Love to see you finally chill out, it says, says Michael. It's the You're alcohol. You're usually pretty chill. Every Thursday night we're doing when this. We drink on the air. It's yeah. easier. So, yeah. Every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central, join us here for Junkin' with Jenny. You guys get to see this before everybody else. Right. We do it live because this ends up going out to the Junkin' with Jenny feed and the podcast feed about two or three weeks later. A little bit longer this time because of the holidays. Yeah. Normally it's about a week or two out, uh, but it'll be longer this time because we're going to take uh, some of the holiday weeks off. So we will return with more episodes of Junkin' with Jenny like this, 8 p.m. Central on Thursday nights, the first week in January. So join us back then. This will probably be our last uh, Junkin' with Jenny Facebook Live 
uh, until then. I mean, maybe I might get a real ghost stories online and they're live before that. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll that'd see. be good. But, um, but the Junk and Jenny back again live uh, the first week of January uh, here uh, on uh, this channel. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, greatly appreciate it. Junkinwithjenny.com is a website. Submit your pictures, your stuff, and we may talk about it on a future episode of the program. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. And uh, thanks for, uh, for watching, and we'll talk to you again next year on another episode or this year, depending when you're listening to this. <laughs> Uh, with Junkin' with Jenny. And again, be sure to check out our wine of the week here, our creative juice, uh, the substance Cabernet Sauvignon. The Charles Smith is a winemaker. Great, great stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Bye.